Good evening everyone. I'm here from the Los Angeles area. Today I wanted to talk about the essence of you and then also if you do not like the essence of you, how do you begin the change process? But to cover this topic, let me give you some context because before coming into the monkhood, as many of you know, the context that I was in was I was working as a licensed marriage and family therapist. I work in many settings, such as the group home for foster kids in San Diego. I had my own private practice and then also working at a drug residential treatment center here in Malibu, California. But this is an exercise that I did with my clients in a group setting and I found that it to be so helpful and also so powerful. So if you want to, feel free to follow along. So in the therapy session, uh, for us, we have many opportunities to do individual work, we do family work, but also a powerful opportunity is to do that group work. In these intimate settings, we have about six clients all the way to about 10 clients. And this particular exercise, I wanted to teach the, the, the clients how do you access and how do you assess yourself clearly? And like I said, then how do we start that change process? But let's get through the first step. And one of the things that I like to work on with especially teenagers is to use Plato. And Plato, I find, is something that is engaging, it's exciting. Uh, also, the clients seem to resonate with it so much, and especially for some clients, it's hard for them to access their emotions. Many people just know happy, sad, <laughs> and that's it. But for us is we try to get them to understand deeper parts of themselves, to learn a language where they can communicate their experience in this present moment. And I find that when we give these clients Plato and they're molding it and they're talking to us, it access uh, unconscious part of themselves. It also makes them more calm and it helps them to connect both mind and body. So as we're talking, but this exercise, and you can just imagine it along with me. Uh, typically I'll bring out uh, boxes of Play-Doh. I would have the clients pick their favorite color. And in this exercise is to shape you as accurately as possible in this moment using this Play-Doh. So the clients would take out the Play-Doh, they would start to shape it and mold it. I give them about 10 to 15 minutes and we have the music on in the background. And again, light, easy exercise, but in this moment, present moment, if you can mold it to reflect you currently. So like I said, everyone takes that time. Once everyone is done, then we just put it on the side. The next thing that I do with them is I bring out a basket of fruit. So an assortment of fruits that they can choose from. And then also we bring out a juicer machine. And this exercise goes as follows. And for me, I would have a volunteer. I need someone to come up and we're going to do this exercise together. And the first part, the first step is pick a fruit in the basket and the client will pick one up and we would ask them what is this fruit and as a group they would respond this is an orange okay are you sure <laughs> so for them they're like of course it's an orange okay so for us we cut it up and then just to prove is this an orange and everyone can agree and i asked them if we were to juice this thing you called an orange, what comes out of it? And everyone yells out, it's orange juice. Okay, sure. We try it, we juice it out, and there you have it, orange juice. And then, okay, we continue with this exercise. Pick another fruit. So 
they take one, they lift it up and ask them, what is this fruit? And they'll say, it's a lime. Okay, everyone agrees? Okay, sure. Now with this lime, put it in the juicer. What comes out of this lime? And everyone will agree, it's lime juice. Okay, so we go through the process. Pick another one. What is this? Okay, it's celery. Okay, we juice it. Again, everyone out there, when we juice it, what comes out of this? And many people will say, well, it's celery juice. Then I ask them a trick question. Okay, now this next fruit is a mango. With this mango, is it possible if I juice it, then we get beet juice. Is that, and everyone will say, no, that's not possible. Well, why, why is that? And are you sure? And when I ask them, they'll say, no, you can't get beet juice because it's a mango. It, that's, that's, that's not how it works. And what comes out of it is what it is. Okay, now let's get to the next step and put this all away. And let's bring out, remember the Play-Doh. Imagine we put you into this juicer and we juice it. What comes out of it? Is it anger? Is it fear? Is it resentment? Is it judgment? Is it being critical? What about loneliness and lack of self-worth? Lack of confidence? Is this what comes out of you? Or if you were to juice you now, does it come out happiness? joy, peace, calm, motivation, drive, hopefulness, what, what comes out of you. And again, the same thing. If you were to squeeze you, whatever you are in this moment and the essence of you is exactly what will come out. And many people now are trying to disguise it. With this kind of stuff, just like the fruit, you can't fake the funk. You can pretend, but again, the essence of it, if we were to squeeze you, is exactly what's inside of you. Nowadays, people are trying to portray how they feel that does, that does not match what is actually inside. How do we see that or how is it display? Well, look around. Look at we, how we can sometimes disguise and display ourselves through clothing and through fashion because it communicates a sense of status it communicates a sense of well-being it communicates many things okay other ways people will um, try to display who they are or the essence of them is with accessories you see hip things, you see luxurious things, but many different types of accessories. We see people engaging in makeup. And again, these things are not bad things, so I'm not trying to uh, discard it or minimize it, but it's just ways that people will try to display themselves with makeup, with hair, different hairstyles. And again, it is a uh, image of oneself but with all these things with all these accessories again at the end of the day you can cover up as much as you want to you can trick your friends you can actually trick you and but at the end of the day if we were to juice you like i said you can't fake this you cannot pretend to be a happy person. You cannot pretend, well you can, but again, it oozes out of you. And the essence of you, what is in there, will come out at the end of the day. And I share this just because, not to put anyone down, but to really get you to see yourself accurately and to assess. And then with this, once you can juice yourself, see yourself accurately of, wow, in this moment, if I were to be truthful, if I were to be honest and see things clearly, in this moment, I'm actually quite unhappy. 
um, I'm resentful. I still have so much history and heaviness with my parents and I can't forgive and I don't want to let go. I am someone who holds a grudge on purpose. I want to punish you. I want to judge you and I'm critical of people. Okay, say that. Own that and honor it. And then when you can see yourself accurately, then we can do something about it. I wanted to share this not to make you feel bad or to have you beat yourself up, but no. If you're in a space where this is actually what comes out of you and you don't like it, now look at it from the lens of wisdom. Now use it as an opportunity for change and growth. And instead of trying to change your outside world to reflect an inner world, why don't we do the opposite? And the opposite is that we change the inner worlds. We change the essence of us. We change that core and the deeper part of us. And then the outside worlds will follow. And the next part is I want to give you steps for those who are wanting to go inside. This is three pillars that can be so helpful for you. And I wish I knew this information because as I was going through my transformation process, I, I didn't know how to change. I knew the way my life was. It wasn't where I wanted to be, but I didn't know the steps. So then of course, like most people, I would go to the outside world. I would use activities. I would use external things like what I just described putting it on, putting on success, putting on these accessories. But at the end of the day, my inside was still the same. So now going back to what do we do and what is the system that we can use? So these three pillars in Buddhism that can start to change your inner world. Again, not religious, but just tools that are helpful for you to cultivate the mind, brightness of mind. And the first part is giving. Find ways to give. Giving and generosity can be through resources. So some people will donate money. Some people will donate things to here. I'm here at a meditation center. In the monastery, people will donate um, like I said, money, they will donate resources, they'll make an uh, offering for the lighting, for electricity to keep the temple alive. So that's one way, giving of your resources. Another way is giving of your time, volunteering, coming, uh, helping someone to do tutoring with them, helping with an organization, with a church, with a temple, and you're volunteering physical time. That's one way of giving. Another way of giving is encouragement, uh, helping to support people through your words. Another way of giving is through teaching the Dhamma or teaching a proper way of living, encouraging people to be a moral person, to do the right thing. This is uh, act of generosity. And then lastly, an act of generosity and giving is forgiveness. When you forgive you, when you forgive other people, either living or alive, this is one form of giving. So this is pillar number one. Pillar number two is morality. Morality is the basic Thing that helps to guard the human, guards the human mind of worry, of darkness. So the first one is no killing, abstain from killing. Second one is to abstain from stealing. Third one is to abstain, no sexual misconduct. The fourth one is no false speech. And then the fifth one 
is to refrain or abstain from substances that alters the mind. So these are the second pillar and this is the morality part. Again, not religious, but just a basic moral code and that can keep you on track. Okay. The third pillar is meditation. Meditation is purifying the mind. You can do walking meditation, you can do sitting meditation, but through this act of bringing yourself back here, you start to purify the mind. So this is a three pillar. You can pick from any of these and start to integrate it into your life. And every single time that you do any one of these things, you can do all of them, you can do some of them. All of them would be great, but again, as you're starting, pick one, pick two. And every time you do it, what you'll notice is you'll add a little bit of goodness, a little bit of pure energy that goes into your core, that goes into your mind. And all the darkness that you have in there, now it starts to dilute it. Now it starts to change and activate a change right there inside of you at your core. And slowly but surely, it shifts you from the inside out. And so why am I sharing this? And for me, I'm sharing this because when I was at the darkest phase of my life, when things just felt so hectic and who I was at that time, if you were to squeeze me, wow. If I can be honest, was just, I was anxious. I was fearful. I was lonely, really desperately wanting connection. I didn't feel proud of myself. I did not have the confidence. I had sadness. I had jealousy and resentment and I couldn't let that go. I don't want to be that. I didn't want to be that. But if I were to be honest at that time, this was just the essence of me. And through the practice, like I said before, I tried everything else. But at the end of the day, it didn't change my inside until I was told of this, these three pillars. And these three pillars changed my life. And I knew I wanted to change and I wanted to heal. And also I knew that I had two paths that I can go on. One was a path of change and transformation that was temporary. It felt good, it eased the pain, it cover up some things, but again, hmm, it didn't really change me inside. Or another way of doing what it takes, doing the real stuff and nourishing your mind from the inside. And this path was the real thing. This was the nutrients that I needed for the inside. But I knew that this path, the change was real. But I also knew this path, it took longer. I didn't know how long it would take. I knew it would be hard. I knew it would be lonely. I knew it would be challenging and it would take time. But with these two options weighing on me, I said, I want to change for reals. I want to be that person not to act happy, not to be kind, not to pretend or display an image of me, but actually, wow. If you were to squeeze me in this moment, what comes out of it is happiness and joy. And it took me, like I said, so many years, over a decade, and practicing every single day, I would do meditation. Every single day I would give, after my meditation, I would give $1, I would put it in a cabinet, I would make a wish and resolutions for myself, Every single day, then I would do an act of generosity and help others, encourage others. I did this over and over and over. 
some days I would question, is this working <laughs> or is this not working? But again, I just kept going and I trust the process. Put my head down and go and go and go. And the spiritual path eventually took me into the monastery. And again, I did the same thing, but on a deeper, more intense level of keep doing these three pillars, taking care of my morality, taking care of my meditation, and also practicing generosity. And with time now, in this moment, I can genuinely say that, not to brag or anything, but in this moment, from where I was before, now, if you were to squeeze me, what comes out of it, or what comes out of me, really is joy. And I feel peaceful. And I feel hopeful. I feel alive. I feel positive. I feel motivated and driven and with purpose. But it, it took a very long time. But I just share this because hopefully this can be an inspiration for someone that there is light at the end of the tunnel. If you were to ask me back then, can I really change the core and essence of me and really be happy? No, <laughs> no, no, not even close. It was like night and day. But now through the practice, I can say that the, the process is correct. So hopefully this is one system for anyone who is wanting to change themselves from the inside out to give it a try. Hopefully it will work for you and just test it out and see uh, how it turns out for you. So the last thing I want to leave you with is a homework assignment. For those who need some hand-holding and some guidance and an activity that can move you forward is after watching this video, something practical that you can do is one, take this moment or take time to reflect and contemplate. If you were to juice yourself today, this present moment, what comes out of you? And take out a journal and write these things down. Do not beat yourself up. Do not judge you, but see yourself accurately. It's a teachable moment, it's a learning moment, and this is something that can serve you. Again, be very kind and gentle and see yourself clearly. See yourself accurately. That's step number one. Step number two, then pick something of the list that I described to you of the three pillars. Start to integrate it every single day. And like a flower, Every single day, you're watering this flower. Every single day, you're giving it nutrients. Every single day, you're giving it sunlight. And if you can do that, take this time to continue to nourish you genuinely, you'll hopefully notice that something inside of you starts to shift. And your mind can become more bright and happy. And eventually, you can grow and evolve into the fullest version of yourself. But it's getting dark. <laughs> so this is something I wanted to share and I hope this is helpful. So as always, sending you my greetings all the way from the Los Angeles area and hope you all are doing well and sending you all my blessings. Satu.